Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. This week, the tangle I'm doing, I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't know how to pronounce the person who designed it. So I'll just flip it up on the screen here. Today I'll be using a Zendala tile, a Micron PN pencil tortillon and you'll also need this Marcus Operandus and I'll put a link below this video to show you where you can print out one of these. So I'm placing my Zendala on the Marcus Operandus and just marking where the zeros are. If you don't want to use one of these, just divide the circle into eighths. I'm now going to draw some lines lightly in pencil from one side to the other. And I'm doing this matching up each of the points so that they cross in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is only a guide. I'm now going to divide each of these lines into three sections by placing two dots. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly in the right place, just uh, gives you, again, a guide. The next part that I'm going to do, Wendy doesn't do in her step out, but I think it might make it easier to show you how to do this next part. So I'm going from the second dot right up to the edge of the, the next line and then placing a dot in the center of it. And it'll just give me a guide to how I'm going to draw that edge of the pattern. Using this line, I'm going to take my Micron PN and draw a couple of S shapes. The first one is a reverse S. So take it and end it on that middle dot and then do a proper S and that forms the other side. And do this on each one of those sloping lines until we get right around. I'm now going to use a back to front S along this line. So start there, make the center go through that middle dot and end on the bottom dot. So do this on each one. At the bottom of each line, I'm going to draw around and form a loop. Now I'm going to draw from the bottom of that loop and bring it to where that sloping line dips and do it from the other side of the next loop. And I'm going to continue this all the way around the pattern. Whoops, I missed a loop. Easy fixed.
I'll now add some contour lines in each of these sections. I'm now going to add a little V at the end of each of those lines and colour it in so that I've got a little bit of weighting. It just adds that little bit of drama to the edge of these patterns. So that's the finished pattern. I'm now in the center going to add a modified version of drawings. So I'll start with a circle. And again, using that S kind of a shape, I'll draw an S and land on the circle. Normally drawings is only sort of goes halfway, but I'm going to make it go all the way around this center circle. It's almost a little bit like spokes. This next part reminds me of angel wings. Just adding a few bumps. And add some creases down from those bumps. I'm going to colour the centre of the circle but leave a little window so that it looks like light is hitting the surface. I like to add a little loop at the end so it looks like the top of that wing is bending over. Of course you can use whatever patterns you like on the center and on the outside and so I've decided to do sand swirl on the edge and I'm using a micron 01 so that the lines are a little bit finer. I'm going to add an inner loop to these loops. And then when that's done, I'm going to fill them with a few print ops.
To add a bit of contrast to the background, I'm going to draw Knightsbridge. It's another drama tangle, so the boldness of it will provide that extra contrast that breaks up the pattern a little bit. I'll go back to my Micron PN now to colour these squares. I'm going to add some shading and I'll put just a little bit around the edge of the pattern. I'm not going in too heavily with graphite on this piece because I want to add a little bit of colour. Uh, I will show you though a different way of shading it if you want to keep it black and white. Blend that in a little bit with a tortillon. Here's another tile I completed earlier and you can see that I've added shading around those uh, sand swirls so where they're overlapping I've put a little bit of graphite and then blended it in. So I might just leave mine for now and put another bit of shading around the other edge on the inside of the pattern. You could see on that other tile that I, I did other things with shadows and I'll show it to you again later on.
you may notice that I'm not putting graphite where the black sections are. It tends to make them turn up a little bit shiny. So there's my other tile again and you can see I've put some shading on those little leafy bits and in the centre and you can see also that my Knightsbridge is a bit smaller on that tile. Now we don't normally use an eraser in Zentangle but if you're adding any kind of colour it is a good idea to just rub out the, the pencil lines where the colour is going to go because once you put watercolour onto a pencil line, it will set the pencil. I've chosen these two reds, uh, deep scarlet red and middle cadmium red. These are Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. I'm going to activate this colour with a water brush. If you don't have one of these, just use plain water and a normal brush. I always start from the lightest end first. So just put plain water on the edge to soften that edge and then bring it down into the darker colour. And you can always wipe your brush on a tissue or a piece of paper towel if you've got too much pigment and I like to blend it up a little bit so you can push the colour backward and forward.
So there's your two tiles, one with colour, one without. There's lots of things you can do with this pattern. So here's a few examples. There's the two I did showed you today. Or you can use a tan tile and renaissance colours. This one I use simpler patterns in the centre. And that one, after watercolour, I just use the pencil on top. So there's a few examples for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a few links here on the screen and there's a subscribe button.